Hello world. I've been skating for about four years now, long enough to hopefully pass on some guidance and advice, but also short enough to remember what it was like when I just started out. With that in mind, because a number of people have requested it, in this video I'll run through how and why I got into inline skating, and why I'm still enjoying it four years later. I started properly skating on my 37th birthday, but why? Let's go back a few years to get to this answer. As a kid, I was always very active and enjoyed sports. Up to the age of 15, my sport of choice was football, or soccer to the rest of the world. I then progressed on to playing hockey. No, not ice hockey, but field hockey. If you're not sure what that is, I suggest you Google it. I continued playing hockey through all my 20s and into my early 30s. Another sport I've been into since I was a kid was cycling. This was something I never did competitively, but just enjoyed doing. After I finished playing hockey, cycling became my main hobby, and is something I still do a lot of today. Around the age of 36 though, I started to think about taking up a new hobby. I wanted to try something that involved learning some new skills, and something that would challenge me. That was when the idea of inline skating really started to happen. Inline skating seemed like it would satisfy my need for physical activity, while also providing me with some new skills to learn. I also like the idea of doing an activity that not many other people do. It's good to be different sometimes. So I set about doing some research into skates, and fitness skates were the first type I really came across. The idea of purely fitness skating though just seemed a little dull to be honest. I then turned to YouTube for some inspiration, and it wasn't long before I found what I was looking for. That was of course inline city skating. A number of channels caught my imagination. Watching these people roll through the city, up and down stairs, weaving in and out of objects, looked like amazing fun. This reaffirmed that firstly I wanted to learn to skate, and secondly I wanted to be a city skater. Being a cautious person though, I didn't want to fully commit to buying a pair of skates, so I started to look around for places that would hire some out. My thinking was, try before I buy. I discovered a shop in London just off Hyde Park that hired out Seba FR2s, which as luck would have it, were a pair of skates I'd become interested in as they were recommended for urban based skating. So, on my 37th birthday, my wife and I headed to London for a day trip. We visited the skate shop and I hired a pair of the Seba FR2s and my wife hired some quads. We then wandered over to Hyde Park and buckled up. I spent the next couple of hours wobbling around and at one point falling heavily on my elbow, however, I absolutely loved it. As for my wife, well, not so much. I think her exact words were, I'm never doing that again. Anyway. We returned to the skate shop and I bought myself a brand new pair of the Seba FR2s. Over the next couple of months I tried to get out on my skates as much as possible. As it was winter at the time this wasn't always that easy, but slowly and surely I started to get the hang of it. The first thing I taught myself other than just rolling along was the drag stop. I practiced this every time I went out. At first I kept turning to the side as I applied pressure to the floor but after a few sessions I was able to do it. I then made it my goal to learn a proper stopping technique, and I went for the power stop. I practiced this over and over and over, and when I finally was able to do it properly, it gave me a huge boost of confidence. I'm so glad I learned to slow down pretty much from day one. I cannot emphasise to others how important stopping is, especially if you want to skate the streets. It was after about two months that I first tried skating out on my local streets. Up until that point I had just been using a small car park a few hundred metres from my house. By this point I had the power stop down to a reasonable level, and I knew as long as I didn't skate too fast, I would be okay stopping. Getting out onto the streets was when things became so much more fun for me. I really enjoyed learning the basics in the car park, but having the whole town to explore was exhilarating. In those early days, I just skated areas that I knew well. That way, there wouldn't be any nasty surprises. I found two other much larger car parks about a kilometre from my house, which became my main practice ground for city skating. In these car parks, there were curbs, uneven surfaces, and things to jump over. If you've watched any of my tutorial videos, these are featured heavily in those. As my confidence grew, I started to venture further afield. I thought I knew my hometown of Cheltenham pretty well, but it's amazing how much I've discovered on skates. I think skates are the perfect way to explore the city. Compared to say walking or running, you can cover a lot more distance in a shorter period of time. 
I'm lucky that Cheltenham is predominantly flat, and so skating is fairly easy going. What we do have, however, is loads of bumpy, uneven surfaces. I've grown to absolutely love skating this type of surface, though. I like the challenge of negotiating it. It's created a few falls along the way, but having to roll it so often, I think it's actually become the best area of my skating. After about a year of skating, I decided to upgrade my skates. After a fair bit of research, I ended up going for the Seba Highlight Carbon. Although these skates are quite expensive, they were definitely worth the money to me. To date, they are still my favourite pair of skates. Being a soft shell skate, they are super snug, but comfortable. I refer to them as my slippers. Coupled with the stiffness of the carbon fibre, they are super responsive. The only real downside is they're not as robust as a hard shell boot, so you do need to take care of them a little more. At the same time I bought the highlights, I also purchased a pair of aggressive skates. These were the USD Aeon 60s. When I first started inline skating, aggressive skating, and specifically learning to grind, was always something I wanted to try, but didn't really feel brave enough to do at first. After about a year though, I felt ready to give it a try. If you've watched the channel since the beginning, you will know that I've never done an aggressive video. The reason being, I'm pretty terrible at it. I originally set myself the goal of learning five basic grinds, including the front side, back side, and sole slide. I built myself a homemade rail, and started to practice on and off. Unfortunately, my very first session ended up with me in hospital, requiring stitches in my elbow, after a couple of heavy falls, so not the best of starts, to be honest. Some upgraded elbow pads and a few weeks later, though, and I started to get the hang of the front side and the sole slide. I've continued to practice on and off ever since, but to be honest, aggressive skating is probably something I will never master. I do hope to do a video in the future showing you my progress, but we'll have to wait and see. In the first year or so of skating, I made it a goal to try and learn a new technique about once a week. I watched an absolute ton of YouTube videos, and then tried to go out and replicate what I saw. I'm a completely self-taught skater. It's been a lot of fun along the way to do it like this, but there have definitely been times when it would have been good to have an instructor help me out, to show me what I was doing wrong, for example. When I tell people I do inline skating, generally the first thing they say is, that sounds dangerous. It's interesting that people's conception of skating involves hurting themselves. Now to say you will not fall over at some point would be a lie, but to anyone out there thinking of taking it up, I promise you will spend more time upright than you will sat on your backside. You just need to commit to some practice, and once you've got some of the basics, you'll never look back. Just go for it. It was after about two years of skating that I decided to give the YouTube channel thing a go. I was given a GoPro Hero 5 for my birthday, and I also bought myself a selfie pole and a few bits and pieces to go with the GoPro. I had no real experience when I started out. I thought I'd just upload a few videos and see what happened. I have absolutely no experience with filming or editing. In the first year, I uploaded about 25 videos, mainly skate flows. Very slowly, I started to pick up subscribers. Then, after one year on YouTube, I'd acquired 644 subscribers, which was way more than I ever thought I would get. Encouraged by this, in my second year, I've started to introduce tutorial videos to the channel. These seem to be popular, especially my stopping video. These videos have really helped to grow the channel, and as I edit this particular video, I now have over 5,000 subscribers. This is truly amazing, and I want to say a huge thank you to you all. Thank you. So to bring this video to a close, I guess I should talk a little about the future. In terms of my own skating, I hope to continue to improve my city skating techniques, and try to become a smoother and more rounded skater. In terms of the channel, I plan to visit a few other destinations other than Cheltenham to keep the skate flows varied, and I also hope to bring some more tutorials. Generally though, it's just to carry on enjoying skating. As always, thanks very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video, please also hit the like button. Skate safe, and I'll see you soon.